going to go over these things. Integrated life is a life that is rich in qualities um, a person most, the person most desires, and one in which shows how, and one which shows how connected we all are to each other. And I also included a bunch of pictures of, of um, you know, just activities that we've done through Team Davis um, and other things. So a life really, for all of us, um, grows from a person's own choices, desires, dreams, and as I shared, experiences. Um, from a very early age all the way to our very accomplished artist, Jan Lonerdahl, whose artwork is behind him. Um, and really making sure that we, uh, I, this is a shameless plug for universal screening in Yolo County for Yes to Success, um, but really starting early to identify things because things are a whole lot, suffering is a whole lot easier to intervene with early on than later on. So get, you know, providing the support for development of skills and all those things so they can continue to grow and obtain those things and desires and choices for themselves. Um, it's really not controlled by what kind of services are currently available. You know, sometimes it gets so frustrating that, um, you know, X, Y, and Z are the only things available, so we have to make do with that. Um, and the one thing that Team Davis has taught me is that, man, when you get like 10 motivated parents around, or at least, or two, I mean, magic can really happen. Um, um, the little girl on the left, actually, she's not from around here, she's actually a daughter of a uh, friend of mine from high school in Germany. And what I thought was really cool is her grandfather made that walker out of PVC pipe and was just like, showed it on Facebook. And I was like, can I use this and talk? So, um, or riding a bike, you know, this Tommy Ruiz, who's um, uh, a long-standing member of our community. And, you know, he's never ridden a bike and I think he's what, 10 there, 11? Um, and within two days with these adapted bikes, he was now riding a bike and he can get around all over town. Um, and then, create a garden. It's the best way to get anyone to eat vegetables. So it really goes beyond just meeting a person's basic needs. I mean, when we look at policies, it, you know, it really is like, oh, well, we just, you know, the school, yes, that's free and appropriate public education, but then beyond that, what do we, how do we, you know, allow individuals to reach a level for, to have a really rich quality? of life. Um, and most of that is through laughter and just being together, right? It includes all areas of, personal, uh, of a person's life, you know? So going in the social life, the, you know, uh, athletics and the pride that you obtain from kicking everybody's tail at a community triathlon, right? So um, to community dances and inclusion. Um, that's my wife there laughing her butt off. but. Um, and it is a life that's always changing through a person's life. I mean, so, you know, that triathlete that's there, I used to look kind of like that. Now I weld and so now I don't look like a triathlete anymore. But also, it's really making sure that, you know, you're not pigeonholing someone to say, okay, well, this is, you're going to do this forever, even though their interests change and it's dynamic and listening to the individual. Um, we had a, a, an athlete that passed away um, three years ago, but on her 64th birthday, you know, she, she was always reminding us, you know, so Co Coach Kelly's my wife, and she just would just say, Coach Kelly, age, it ain't nothing but a number. And then that was just her motto. So, you know, really just keeping that, that sense of, of creativity and that vibrancy um, and just working through all of those things. So, um, and it's a life which, is the kind of life we all want and is not unique to people that happen to have developmental disabilities. So Dr. Seuss, he's the grand, you know, he's the smartest guy in the world, right? So, um, and he helps me live with my weirdness because we're all a little weird, life's a little weird, and when we find someone whose weirdness is compatible with ours, we join up with them and fall in mutual weirdness and call it love, right? So um, what I've developed with Team Davis and working with um, and, and all the families in my private practice in the Mine Institute and working in the communities um, is, is that um, we celebrate our mutual awareness in love. Just by way of a little bit of more introduction about um, what I do in my work life, uh, I do workplace health and safety education for the University of uh, California, Berkeley, uh, in a program called the Labor Occupational Health Program. 
And just to piggyback on the things that Steve was saying about uh, hanging out with people with disabilities can really sort of have an impact on you. So not only am I a parent, but I've been able to work things into my work life where I'm working with employers of people with disabilities, um, different places around the country, transition teachers, all with the idea of making sure that that students and then workers who have developmental and intellectual disabilities also get workplace health and safety education on the job. And as you can imagine, um, it rarely happens. And so we're really trying to push because um, people who with disabilities often work in very hazardous work. And we don't want to keep people out of those jobs, but we do want to make sure that they're safe and that they know what their basic rights are, et cetera. So just a little plug for thinking about things like that. Um, uh, when you think about employment. So I wanted to give uh, a little introduction, as Steve said, um, to this organization that the three of us are in, involved in. And then I think what we're going to do is uh, I'll run through things pretty quickly and then ask Heather to come up uh, to talk about a special program that she's running that grew out of our work in, in Team Davis. And then we're going to showcase um, three Team Davis participants uh, with the idea of looking for how has community integration really played out in their lives and what are we learning from, from this discussion in terms of what, what's needed and what do we need to do in terms of uh, making sure that we're all playing some part in having a fully integrated uh, community. So just uh, to to uh, give the little overview, this did start out as um, the local Special Olympics team, and we're still doing Special Olympics. Um, but in about 2006, we realized we really wanted to do more than, than what was, we were able to do as part of Special Olympics. And so uh, we established a board of directors, and we grew from um, a small number of activities to many sports and other activities. And I just want to say that one of the, what I would say as a parent, um, that one of the main strengths of our organization, and, and in particular our board of directors that runs the program, is the fact that we have not just parents on the board. And the fact that we have very committed community members, like Steve and Kelly, who are both obviously on the board, um, who are, who are who are showing their commitment every day and helping to drive the program. So I would just say, cutting to the end, one of the lessons I would say that is really, really important is um, communities need to have more than the parents involved. They need to have community members. Um, so we currently have about 150 active participants uh, um, and about 90 regular volunteers. Most of our participants and volunteers are from Davis, but we have other t uh, representation from other towns in Yolo County too. And just because it'll give you a little bit of a picture, about 40% are 16 and younger, and 60% are over um, 17, with most of the folks in that group being between 20 and 40, but we do have a few uh, individuals who are over 40. Uh, so our mission, is to was to expand the lives of our participants in a variety of different areas, uh, both physical skills, uh, recreation, um, uh, you know, lots of different different activities. But our main mission has always been: what are we? What can we do to create opportunities for community integration? So that it's not we and them; it's us. And so. Uh, that has been in the back of our minds with whatever we do. So uh, just really quickly, um, as, we, as I said, we're still doing a lot of the Special Olympic sports. In the fall and winter, we do basketball, soccer, and, and bowling. Um, and then in the summer, we do uh, track and bocce ball and softball and tennis. Um, and those programs are all part of Special Olympics. They all, each sport culminates with a, uh, after eight weeks of practice in a regional tournament. And then these particular spring and summer sports end in a um, summer games, which it has for the last few years ended up being at the UC Davis campus, which we're thrilled about, <laughs> as you can imagine. Yeah. Um, so 
we also, as I mentioned earlier, started doing a number of other activities. And uh, we have a singing class, um, and our singing, our singing group has performed as part of Aggie Idol, which I don't know whether you guys know about that, but it's uh, on the UC Davis campus, the student athletes on campus have a, like an American Idol type of program, and for the last few years they've designated Team Davis as the recipient of that, uh, of the donations that come through that, and in um, sort of to thank them, what we do is our singers get up on stage and sing them a song. So that's happened for the last few years. Um, we also have an art class, which is more for our older uh, participants, and that's regularly held every week, actually, in Steve's uh, clinic um, in town. And uh, they have showcased their art at Art About Town, which is a um, in Davis uh, many times, and actually most recently at Mind Institute events, too. So that makes the artists feel really um, important, and in fact, I've bought a couple of their art, too, is really good. <laughs> and, um, and then finally, one of our parents started what we call Kokomo's, which is our dance party that we have uh, quarterly, and that's also for, we, we, we make it 13 and above for that. Um, those are held in families' homes, usually. Um, and then most recently, we realized we really were not meeting the needs of um, our youngest folks. And so we've started a brand new program called our Juniors Program, where we're teaming up with local facilities in town to offer art classes, dance classes, swimming, and actually the most recent one was gymnastics. Um, and the, it's the same as if you signed up for a, a regular class in any of those facilities, but it, um, that your friends are part of that, and we provide a lot of volunteers so that there's more one-on-one -on -one instruction. Um, so that's, that's the, the, the difference. Um, and then finally, I'll just say that we have done a lot of other community-based activities, again, with the idea of trying to integrate into the community better. Um, in one of the local elementary schools for the last several years, we've, uh, we've had about six of our participants lead PE classes for a period of about six weeks, so twice a week for six weeks they come out and, um, and lead the, the PE classes, and they're usually sports that they've learned through Special Olympics, um, and it's coordinated by one of our uh, parents. Um, and this year we found out that the, the families were so excited, and the students were so excited, and the teachers uh, at the elementary school were so excited about um, this involvement that they've decided to build us a bocce ball court, because we don't have our own. <laughs> so sometime this fall, we're all getting together to, to build this, this bocce court so that we can have a, um, a home for our bocce program. Um, and then we also have, we participate in the community races all year round. That's one of uh, Coach Kelly's sports. Uh, and so that is another opportunity for community integration. Not only are our folks out in the community, but they also team up with volunteers. So. Um, to, to run together, and so that, that provides that opportunity. And then um, every summer for the last few times, Davis Aquadarts has provided us with a, a swim program. And again, it's another example of volunteers from an organization teaming up with our folks to do something together, in this case swimming, where they really get to know each other uh, over time. And I think that's kind of what we're, what we're looking for. So now I'm going to turn it over to Heather to talk about a brand new uh, program that she's coordinating um, that symbolizes our relationship with UC Davis and some uh, really cool things that have, have happened as a result. Last fall I was given the opportunity to develop a wellness position for our department and one of our first initiatives was our partnership with Team Davis. Um, so as an on-campus department and a department that is student reg fee funded, we have to be very deliberate with how we use our resources. Um, about four years ago, we developed our strategic plan. And as you can see, we have four main core goals and six supportive goals. And our partnership with Team Davis really um, feeds into all areas of our core goals, uh, specifically the community and inclusivity portion and our partnerships portion. On the next slide, this is how partnerships is defined um, by our department. 
And as the demographics change on campus, uh, we've really found that it's important for us to extend our reach into the community, not just across campus, but um, in the greater area and utilize resources on both sides to really make sure our programs, our services, our offerings um, are as, as great and robust as possible. Um, after we formalized our partnership with Team Davis, uh, we brought in the Workability Program. This isn't a new program, um, but it is new to us. It's a state-funded program. Um, as I mentioned before, we are a student reg fee funded department, so we, um, it was important that we had a program that we could utilize to pay the individuals coming to work for our department or to work within the workability program. We provided some of the, um, the uniforms, the name tags, the time cards to really um, start them off with um, that, that proper job development. So they came into uh, the Activities and Recreation Center. Uh, we had them working. Um, in this photo, you see someone working in our equipment checkout room. Some of the items that they would check in and out are um, towels, locks, safety equipment, a number of sporting equipment items, um, and really gave them that one-on-one -on -one interaction with folks all throughout the day coming in and checking in and out that equipment. We also had students at our front desk swiping in members as they came in for their workout and greeting patrons, um, developing friendships, and working side by side with our UC Davis students. It was really important that we had that peer-to-peer -peer contact um, while our workability students were on shift. In addition to the equipment checkout room and the front desk, we also had a few students cleaning equipment around the facility and really making sure that things were neat and tidy um, and they were able to alert us to any items that came up that were uh, a little out of sorts. In the middle of the year, um, after we had gone uh, two quarters into the program, and I did want to mention we started the program in December of 2013 with four students. And in spring of 2014, we ended with 12 students. So within three quarters, the program really grew tremendously. And in the middle of the year, I was contacted by two different students um, who had just come into the ARC, had uh, seen our workability folks, and wanted to learn more. So they decided to write papers for, for some of their classes um, about the workability program and about our, our partnership with Team Davis. So it really didn't take long um, before we really saw our reach, um, not only in our facility, but, but the message spreading across campus. Uh, we were also contacted by the Aggie newspaper uh, very early on, and an article was written about the program and again about our partnership. The next program uh, that we developed uh, was the Ags United program. And we started in fall with a soccer game. It was the only rainy night I think we had in all of fall quarter, of course. Um, but that didn't stop the, the level of excitement and, par and participation. We had uh, quite a few people come out and um, for it being the first game and the first um, part of the Ags United program, I was running around trying to organize and get everybody settled. And at one point I looked over and some of our UC Davis students had gathered up um, all of the, the Team Davis athletes into a big circle, started stretching, started introducing themselves to each other. And immediately it just broke down any kind of barriers that existed. Um, people were, were excited to be there, played a couple of games, and then by the end of the night, people were high-fiving, giving hugs. It you know, was within minutes and moments um, of those relationships just really building. Um, it was really exciting to see. In spring quarter, we um, included Team Natomas and Team Davis um, in two nights of basketball. And in spring, we had a softball game. And we noticed that, that about 90% of those first UC Davis students that came out to play soccer returned for basketball and softball because they just had such an amazing experience that first time around. 
And uh, we started primarily with our own student employees, but by the time we got to softball, we had some graduate students come out to play. Uh, we had people from other um, academic programs and other uh, just students across campus that had heard about the program and wanted to participate. So it was really great to see just in the short amount of time how much it did grow. Finally, um, we had our fourth annual football clinic this year, and the football clinic was something that was started prior to the partnership that we had formalized with Team Davis. It was the first way that um, Team Davis was able to come on campus, and through this year and our formalized partnership, we continued this event. We had the Aggie football team, the marching banda, and a number of volunteers come out and it was an amazing day um, in the spring quarter and really, really great to see how the football players interacted with the Team Davis athletes. And additionally, we had about six other local Special Olympics team, teams come out, so it was uh, approximately 70 people uh, participated in that day. Um, we had athletes there as young as five years old to about 45 years old. And again, just a wonderful day, a really fun day of sport. Um, the bottom picture, uh, this was all the athletes running through a tunnel um, with the banda on either side of them. You can't see them in the photo, but just the energy was, was amazing that day. So through this partnership, um, we've received a lot of feedback from our students saying that they are really thankful uh, that we've brought this program on campus. And they, many of them have commented that they've never been exposed to, to people outside of kind of their own comfort zone with any kind of cognitive or physical disabilities. And immediately, as I said before, the barriers were um, knocked down, the friendships were, um, were built. And on that very basic level, I think our students and staff involved really um, discovered that you know we're all we're all different people. We all want to have fun. We all want to make friends, and we all want to um, you know live a, a healthy and um, full life. So it really has been a great program. Um, we're hoping to start workability back up in the fall with the same amount of people that we ended with and look to expand into some of our sister facilities. We'll continue with our sports and um, just continue growing and developing those relationships. Um, so now I'd like to pass it back to Robin um, to talk about some of the other connections that Team Davis has with UC Davis. And I just have to say that out of everything we do, I think everybody's most favorite thing is that football clinic. <laughs> because the, you know, the Aggie football players are, are rock stars. They're celebrities. And um, so our, our kids are just like so, our kids and adults are so excited about being part of that. And um, I'll never forget last year, um, Coach Ron Gold, Gould, from the, who heads up the football um, team, started this drum circle in, right after the, the whole uh, clinic and everybody was involved and kind of dancing and it was just, I'll never forget it, it was great. Anyway, um, okay, so just some other connections that we have with UC Davis just to illustrate what an incredible partnership we feel so lucky to have. For the last several years, um, we've had a garden on campus that's part of our good foods class. So this, these two are, are, are um, united. Uh, the, the Team Davis Garden, as well as our Good Foods class, were started by Professor Liz Applegate, that many of you may know on campus, the, a nutrition um, and sports uh, professor. And the idea behind the, the, this program is that um, the classes alternate between a classroom setting where our students learn from UC Davis nutrition students all about nutrition and they cook a little bit together. This is in a, a classroom that has a kitchen. And then the next week they go to the garden, they learn lessons in the garden and do some harvesting or some planting so that there's some connection between what grows in the garden and what you're eating and in encouraging um, eating nutritionally. And I just have to say that even though it actually reaches 
a fairly small number of our participants as compared to our sports programs, which will often bring out you know, 50, 70 um, participants. The, this Good Foods program, it's you know, hitting more like 15. But we feel like it's so important because there are about 100 UC Davis nutrition students that have been exposed to our participants are learning um, how to break down nutrition so that it makes sense to people. They're learning a lot of skills and they're getting to be, develop relationships with, um, with our participants. So um, to me it feels really, really valuable. Um, we are also connected with uh, the Best Buddies organization on, town, in town, on campus. Best Buddies was started by the same people that started Special Olympics um, 100 years ago. And um, our Best Buddies organization here at UC Davis, uh, the way it works is there's one-on-one -on -one friendships that, that um, people are paired with, some, with a college buddy and then they do things together and they get meet as a group, et cetera. Um, I just have to say that the UC Davis Best Buddies organization won the state award this year for the best chapter in the state because of what they have been doing. It's, they're just an incredible group of college students. Um, and then finally, thanks to, to Steve's involvement at The Mind, we've started to do some things with The Mind Institute, things like showcasing our art or coming and, and meeting people um, at various Mind Institute events. So that's been really um, a nice connection uh, for us that's part of UC Davis, but sort of a broader, a broader connection. Um, so I wanted to just kind of finish this part out with showcasing three, uh, three different Team Davis participants and to talk a little bit about how Team Davis, uh, you know, at large is trying to do some community integration, um, but we're also trying to see, you know, how is it really playing out for our individual participants. And so as I tell these three stories, um, I hope you'll think about kind of what lessons are we learning from what it takes to get truly integrated into a community, and what are the challenges, and then what can we all do to, to make this more of a reality. So I'm going to start with Matt, who's my son. <laughs> and Matt, um, Matt works at Safeway part-time. He's worked there now six years. And um, he is a courtesy clerk uh, um, at, at uh, a local Safeway. And, um, what that means is that he does bagging, he does sweeps through the store, he does collects carts, he helps customers, he puts food back where it needs to go if it gets left, etc. Um, and just a little bit, I've learned, because I'm interested in work, I've learned about the challenges um, that can happen for somebody with autism that um, is working, but I've also learned about some of the strengths that come from bringing your own, you know, things to, to a job. And so one of the things that's been hard for him is having uh, a schedule that shifts all the time and so that he never really knows what he's, where he's, when he's gonna be working until the week before, sometimes a couple of days before, that's difficult. Having a job that changes a lot and has a lot of pressure, that's difficult. Um, the other thing that's difficult is, uh, and this to me was really interesting when it was, somebody pointed it out, was the, the difficulty that oftentimes people with autism have in seeing the big picture actually translates into very specific work things. So for example, when he has to pick up a spill, he doesn't see the whole spill, he just looks at the little details. The strength of having being able to look at the details is he knows where absolutely everything is in that store and, and, and better than any of the cashiers who've been there longer than he does, et cetera. So it's just interesting to me to see both the challenges and the strengths that come from, from things like that. Other things about, about Matt is he has a pet sitting business. He, he drives uh, as well, which is, you know, I've, I'll tell you that story some other time. Um, I'm okay with it though. Um, and then now, he, and he's been living alone um, or on his own for the last, uh, th now we're into our third year. And his current situation is the best it's ever been. He's always lived with support, um, but now he's living his situation. I want to tell you this because I think it, I want to tell you the other two as well because I think housing is really an important issue. But um, 
He lives with two friends plus a support person who is also a friend. And um, so they share a four bedroom uh, apartment. And uh, in, in a ha um, housing complex that ha happens to have, uh, in addition to a lot of other students, also has a lot of people with disabilities who happen to live there because the housing complex, number one, provides affordable housing, but number two is very um, welcoming to our folks. And so it's been really, really an incredible experience and he's much, much happier than he's ever been. Um, and anyway, so, okay, so that's Matt. Uh, and then this is Tommy. You've heard Tommy's name a few times. Tommy, uh, Tommy has three jobs, three part-time jobs. Uh, in, one is in, is in a grocery store and two are in a restaurant. They're, they're just a couple of hours a week per... Um, oh, I forgot to tell you something about Matt. Sorry, it's really important. The firefighters that you see. So one of the benefits, and then I'll get back to Tommy, but one of the benefits that has been of working in a grocery store where there's a lot of people that come and shop is meeting people on a regular basis and getting to know the customers. He knows many more people than I do in, in town. And he also has developed a really close relationship with the firefighters that shop all the time because that's what they do when they're not out <laughs> fighting fires and attending to medical things is they go shopping because then they go cooking. And so he, he actually has developed a, a very nice friendship with these particular firefighters to the point where they've invited him for dinner. They've given him ride-alongs on the truck. And they also have come a couple of times to watch him play at practices and at tournaments. And I overheard um, the captain say the other day during summer games, we're here to see Matt. He's our buddy, you know, and sort of feeling proud themselves. And I think that is what we're looking for, is that level of connection. So Tommy, Tommy's achieved that too, um, in, a, in a different sort of way. So uh, as I said, Tommy has these three jobs, but I think the thing I want to point out the, the most for Tommy is that he and his mother started a food truck um, called Tommy's Tacos and Tunes, because Tommy loves music. In fact, he's, he and his family are the ones who started our Kokomo's program. Um, and they um, provide, uh, their, do their food truck for different events, but they also once a month open it up to the community to come and buy tacos and sort of have a happy hour with you know friends and neighbors, et cetera. And the only way that Tommy can actually do that that wouldn't just like completely kill his mother with how much work is involved is the fact that the Best Buddies organization has taken that on to help him. And so they come every month, a whole group of those, those folks come every month to help Tommy make tacos and serve them and collect the money, et cetera. Um, and it's a very, very, you know, they've developed a rich uh, relationship with, uh, with those folks because they're the same folks that come back each time. And so he really has, I think, developed friendships that way. Um, Tommy's living situation, he happens to live in the same, same um, apartment complex that my son lives in, is a little bit different. He has uh, two people who live there who are not folks with disabilities, they're not friends, but they, they stay there. And the deal with his living situation is that they, at least one of them has to be there overnight. Otherwise, they provide no support. And so Tommy's support comes in during the day and the evening. And um, that's just, it's a different, if it's, it's a different model. Um, and we'll, we can sort of pull all these things together when we talk about lessons learned in a minute. Uh, this is Allie's story. This is Allie. She's also part of Team Davis and participates in absolutely everything. That's Allie at the ARC. So she's part of workability. And um, as Heather mentioned, workability is specifically for 18 to 22 year olds. And so she's um, going to be aging out pretty soon. Um, but she's done a, a very, very su good job. I, Heather can confirm that. <laughs> and learned a lot of, of uh, really, really important skills. She also lives in an apartment, not the same one, but she does with uh, a support staff um, who, whose rent gets paid for by the, the family. So again, a different, uh, a different model. Um, the one thing I want to say about Alley, which I think will lead us to start to think about some, some things that we need to take away and consider, um, is the, the university is set up mostly to support students. And so they, 
that's who they hire. So they're not going to hire, I'm sorry to say, um, not going to hire ha Allie probably because, because they have to give um, their first priority to the students, which I understand. And so the challenge for Allie is going to be to find a job when she, when she finishes. Now she's going to be a lot further ahead because of the skills she developed through workability and working at the ARC. Now she has a resume that can, she can take. But I'm just going to say that it's a big challenge. As we all know, the unemployment rate is really, really, really uh, high for people with disabilities. And so when we talk about community integration, I really think it's important for us to remember we are also talking about employers and what can we do to convince employers to um, take a chance and um, be, be um, you know, right there with all of us to learn the important skills and um, benefits of hanging out and being and employing people with disabilities. The UC Davis Mind Institute was created in 1998 with a promise to find cures for neurodevelopmental disorders. Every day, our physicians and researchers come closer to fulfilling that promise. Their groundbreaking research on autism, fragile X syndrome, chromosome 22Q11.2 deletion syndrome, ADHD, and other brain disorders are helping children achieve their fullest potential. Please visit our website to find out more about current studies upcoming events, and how you can help make a difference.